Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, Pippi. Man, so many people already here. Hey, Rudak. Hey, Keith. Hello, my aunt. Hey, E.D. Ajax. Hello, hello. Hey, Emma. Man, I have had the best work week that I've had. I have an echo? Yeah. Hmm. How can I have an echo? Did that take care of the echo? Echo. Echo. Okay, no echo here. Okay. Um, never mind. Okay. <laughs> we did it anyway. Oh, nice, Keith. You got the, the board games on the way. Oh. Yeah, that shipping is nuts. International. I think... I wish that they had a... A U.S. distributor for that stuff. I think they will eventually, but um, maybe not for the Kickstarter stuff. At least it's only coming from Canada. If it was coming from Europe, it would be like a hundred bucks. Mm. Hey, Ajax. Hey, Michael. So I was saying, I have had the best work week. Don't know. Well, I have switched up a few things with my, my morning schedule, but man, this has been like um, just a really good week for me. Very happy about it. How's everybody else's week doing? Oh, <laughs> oh it was from the U.S., Keith? From Ohio to Canada. What? That's very strange. I mean, I guess it's, I don't think anything sketchy is happening, but um, I thought it would have shipped from Canada because off the page is in Canada. Oh, to California. Jeez, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place tonight with this, <laughs> this story. <laughs> oh, an uneventful week is a good week though, ED. Most of the time. So this week, um, I was just going to go through um, the Lonesome Hunters uh, Wolf Child. I got the first issue out here, and I thought I would dig through it, and um, I talk about it. I don't know, um, like, ask anything you want to know about uh, my art or the story or whatever. Um, I'll try to avoid spoilers, although I will probably go through the whole first issue. Um, Oh, yeah. Emerald City's, like, right away, isn't it? It's just a, in a couple weeks? I've totally, like, um, stopped paying attention to the convention schedule. Okay. Start off with this guy. I did this for... Um, the trade paperback and I really like this little piece it's just a nice little gem of a drawing I think that is oh I don't think we used it in the second volume yeah we just used it in the first volume it's this guy right here drawn much bigger Oh my gosh, your cat got a piece of tape stuck in his mouth and had to take him to the emergency bed. That's terrifying. I've come home before and found our cat had licked her um, collar until it got up in her mouth and her 
face was stuck down under it was horrible when cats get stuff stuck in their mouths it's like I don't know terrifying Did you do that sword drawing on a stream? I don't think I did, ED. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't. It does seem like the sort of thing I would do on a stream, though. So here's the cover. And I did this way, um, way before I started drawing the issue, because they always need these covers like a couple like months ahead of time. And so I had to, um, the, I guess the only really interesting thing about this cover is that um, the wolf didn't have human hands until I was doing this cover. And then um, when I was drawing it, it occurred to me that the wolf was going to have to um, do stuff with hands. So um, I added those hands and I think it makes uh, the image so much better. Because she was originally, in my mind, just sort of a regular wolf. And this is... Uh, I started doing most of my covers this size and my splash pages as one sheet. Like, the splash page is next. But I was doing these... Um, uh, so this is 22 by 17, which is, I think, a great size. And the reason I, I used to do them on two, um, mostly because it was easier to scan and ship. But I found really good boxes for um, shipping stuff this size. So I stopped um, worrying about it too much. <laughs> Thanks, Rudak. Um, I'm using the my regular paper, the uh, Strathmore mixed media paper. It comes on sheets that are a little bit bigger than this, and I usually cut them down to 11 by 17. So in this case, I just cut them down to um, 17 by 22. Then we get our splash page, and we see the wolf. Hands cleverly obscured by dragging a, a cow away. Pretty, cre pretty creepy. Thanks, Pippi. And the reproduction on this is interesting. Like, it definitely printed way darker than the original art. Which is something I'm not, I still have not been able to figure out kind of where that is coming from. Like, I don't know if it gets darker at the printer or if I'm adjusting the images in a way that's not right or if I'm just using the wrong color profile when I do adjust them. But it's always a lot darker than I expect. And uh, hopefully with my next project, I'll get that sorted out. Yeah, if wolves with opposable thumbs are scary. I guess you can kind of start to see the, the hand here. And so I did, like, this, I probably started this page about a month after I finished the cover. And this one I was trying to do my, um, not my, I was trying to, uh, I was sort of swiping a color palette from Frederick Remington, who does these great, he's like a Western painter, 
and he does these great night scenes and they're always this like um, rich green blue color and um, I love it so much yeah Keith I did hear about the mutating wolves in Chernobyl yeah if they mutated hands they would owe me royalties I think Oh, thanks, Michael. Yeah, I like using the um, the inside front cover a lot to extend the, the splash page. That was sort of my um, a thing I started doing in Harrow County, and I decided to do it um, here, too. It's not always appropriate for everything. Like, the, the project I'm working on right now doesn't do it, but, um, but I think it's just a great way to start an issue. <laughs> yeah, you did hear next project, um, but I'm not talking about that yet. And then we cut to the next day. Howard and Lupe are broke down. This car, this uh, Ford Fiesta, is based off of my parents' car, and um, I used that because I was like, um, well, for one thing, I love little hatchbacks like this. But the other thing was I wanted it to be a, a car that I had access to so I could take photo reference of it. And I have so many pictures of their car. They got their little um, magpie buddy in the back. Thanks, Keith. Yeah, I love... Um, the oranges even look a little bit subdued on the stream compared to what I got in front of me. But yeah, I love that too. I love the autumn, just autumn colors. It's fun. And I love drawing this little magpie. He's so, um, I don't know, drawing animals actually that are like talking are some of the, my favorite things in the world to draw. Because getting them to like, emote in ways that you can read their emotions or whatever but also keep them looking like animals is pretty challenging and pretty fun and he flies away I like this Lupe drawing she looks really cute there very happy And this was, um, oh, this is fun. Whenever you go into the woods, I always have a great time drawing stuff. And I like the gradient here on Lupe's face, that um, backlit shadow where the edges, like the edges of, the, of her silhouette are darker, but like in the core of the shadow, it's a little bit lit up. I love that look. Does anyone use pictures instead of scans on comic pages? Um, yeah, some people do. Um, uh, what's his name? The guy who does, he's been doing a lot of uh, Spawn stuff lately. Very sort of realistic. Very ink splattery kind of a guy. Um, but I know he does a lot of uh, oil paintings for covers, and they're really big. And I'm pretty sure he photographs his work. Um, like, you basically have to go, like, I don't know, you can take a photo of, of a painting if you have a nice enough camera. But a lot, yeah, Sean Jason Alexander, ED. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't know for sure that he photographs this stuff, but I think he must, because some of his cover paintings are like, you know, four feet tall. And you could scan them in sections, but man, it would be a nightmare. In fact, I had thought about photographing my pages um, when I first started doing watercolor, mostly because I figured it would be way faster. But, um, 
there's a lot of technical stuff that goes into photographing images that um, that I just don't know. Rudak, I do work out dialogue and caption placements before I uh, paint a page. In fact, I work them out before I pencil a page. Um, I usually do my lettering over my layouts. You know what? Can I? No, it'll... I was just about to pull them up on my iPad, but that would be a nightmare to try to do right now. Um... Yeah, so here we go. We're back at the junkyard, which was uh, where volume one ended. And we see the magpie queen plopping out of her mask. And she was really fun, too. This is um, this scene made me so happy because she has this like. Um, uh, this like monologue where she's just talking to herself. And um, that's something I wish more comics had, like like a Shakespeare play where people have a, what do they call it when it's in a Shakespeare play when you talk to yourself? Oh, man, I always get on stream and my language goes away completely. But I, I think it's great. Like I love when I, character can like work through a little a soliloquy <laughs> ed with all my all my vocabulary needs and name needs yeah like i think i wish like that was a more of a thing in comics because it's just such a great like way to do a character and it's fun i don't know thought bubbles are fun too they should bring those back more And here we go down at the mechanics. The, um, the exterior building, I actually kind of based it off of a mechanic shop in the town where I live. Changed it up a little bit. And the interior is like totally made up. <laughs> do you use Illustrator for lettering? Yeah, Michael, I do. I, I did... Um, I did use uh, what's it called affinity designer for the first volume and it just didn't work out like it was it was almost almost perfect for doing um, uh, comic book lettering but there was just a few things on the um, the output side where like the colors would slightly change when I exported it for the you know for the final version so um, I'm hoping in, in, a, in a version or two I can go back to them because there's some stuff I really liked in um, Affinity Designer that Illustrator was not so good at mostly drawing um, balloons by hand was really nice in Affinity Designer did you want to show a layout page that has the balloons no. on it? Do you prefer doing word bubbles and text in Illustrator over Clip Studio? Yeah, Keith, I don't like, um, I should give him another shot. I haven't tried lettering in Clip Studio for a long time. Um, but when I did do it, I didn't, I didn't care for it. There is some, something to be said for, for, um, being able to, uh, draw just hand draw some lettering in with using your font. Um, so like at the end of The Wolf Child, there's some some key panels where I did actually hand letter. And I did do that in Clip Studio because it was easier to draw in there than it is in Illustrator. Um, but for the most part, um, Illustrator's better for, for lettering. I, I think it's just the Clip Studio was originally um, designed for lettering um, manga so it's sort of like there's a lot of tools that it kind of want to be want you to lay out your text vertically and um, and the way it deals with fonts isn't quite um, as robust as I would like yeah Edie if I was brave I would hand letter every book but um, 
Man, I'm just not that brave. And my spelling is atrocious. So we head out to um, get a hotel. And Howard calls up Tina. And this was... Um, phone call scenes are really tough. Because, like... When you're talking on a phone, there's not a lot you can do. And this is one of those rare, <laughs> this is a landline conversation, which is only kind of only possible because he's in a hotel and she's at her place of work. Like those are kind of the only places that have landlines. So it's kind of funny. And Tina's shop was always really fun to draw. Like I always like, it's a lot of work, but I do like drawing, um, shelves of stuff. I think that's pretty fun. And I did a thing here too where it's like Howard is green and Tina is sort of this pinkish brown um, to help you follow in between the when you're switching between the two characters. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of people who do letter in InDesign, Michael. They, um, but the files I have seen where they do that look like absolute nightmares to work with. <laughs> they end up being like, just like tons and tons of layers and stuff. Um, but I bet the people who do it swear by it. Because um, you wouldn't do it unless like you had a good reason to do it. But, you know, I actually set up styles in Illustrator, too, so I can, um, I can switch styles really, really quick. This panel. Very happy with the lighting on that. You know what? Let me darken this just a touch. It's a little bit better. Really like the lighting on this panel. And I like, this is sort of a thing that I started to figure out here is doing this rim lighting thing. Um, I do that more and more as I go along and it just looks really nice. <laughs> yeah, I bet those those InDesign files can get really big. I mean, or the yeah, the InDesign files can get big. The Illustrator files can get huge too. If there's any sort of like, um, if you leave the the like raster images in there. Here we go. And I haven't been in one of these in a long time, but um, a lot of people might recognize the church basement where the where there men where there's a men's meeting. So the chairs get put in the circle like that. And this one I did the. Um, this is a pretty conservative church that they're a member of, so they all have the no homo chair. That straight dudes do so like. There's no question. In color schemes was a great solution. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, I I think that helped a little bit. There's a lot of sort of just switching between showing them and trying to show the environment. I guess I only do it once here and once here, and once there. But yeah, just going a little bit wide is good for talky scenes. Yeah, that men's sharing circle. Yeah, you know what? Speaking of back of the head, Michael, that was sort of like an, an intentional thing here where it was like, um, like, what's Howard saying here? He's saying, 
Oh, he's trying to like bring up some painful stuff between him and Tina from the past. And um, he's not feeling good about it. So I put, I had him like, did the back of his head intentionally. So you got the sense that he was like ashamed or embarrassed and was turning away. Um, but then Tina doesn't want to hear it and hangs up real quick. So here we meet the the church guys, and I went with a much more gray um, color scheme for in here because I wanted it to feel very like um, I wanted it to feel kind of oppressive. Like outside, everything's like sunny and bright, but inside it's sort of this gray, and it's like these endless church hallways. Yeah, if anyone doesn't actually know, there's a there's a very common thing among a lot of heterosexual men where they're scared to sit next to one another in chairs because, um, yeah, that might be an American thing. I don't know, but it's pretty common for a lot of guys that I know. All right, and here we meet the church leader. We find out that she is. Um, Tina's grandmother later on but she sits these guys and sets them on their mission okay and this is a good this is a good thing hardly anyone ever gets to see this dude's head I don't know what the hell happened but it got real long and I had to um go back into the pencils which were I penciled this in in clip studio and uh, fix his head so he wasn't Mr. Longhead. But you can see I got most of the way through this page before I really figured it out and, um, and abandoned it. So typically what I would do is eventually get around to cutting this out and pasting it here, like cut, cut a hole here and the piece out of this and then pasting them all together. But this is a good example of how my pencils come out, how I print them, and then ink and paint over the top of it. Yeah, right, Michael? Those beige walls. Did the library like their heart design? You know what? I haven't turned it into them yet. Um, that was my weekend job was to do the last little bit of that and, and get it turned in. Hey, Dennis. Thanks for stopping by. So that's this page. And now we're back. This was a this was one of those scenes that I had in my head um, from when I very first started uh, laying this out or like started writing this. And that was the um, the scene where Howard is laying in bed watching TV like this. This is like my. Um, this is like my post-convention hotel pose that I always hit. Flop in bed, put on the TV, and like just zone out for a while. And uh, so I thought it was funny. And it's very, like I was trying to set this up too where it's like this whole conversation um, back at his church is all about how um, Howard is an evil tool of Satan and he's like um, really this big bad guy and they have to you know seek his destruction 
But then he's just like plopped on the couch like a goober or on the bed watching cartoons. Rudak, do you choose which colors to print your pencils based on the overall color scheme of the page? I kind of just keep it always brown. I found that like um, a brown, the brown pencils uh, really disappear for me. So they, um, like even when you can see them, you don't see them. It's, I don't know, it's interesting. Like the, my newest project that I'm working on, I've stopped printing pencils on the actual page and I actually light box it. Um, and I think it makes for a little bit cleaner page. Um, and I'm doing that because I, well, for a number of reasons that I'll talk about probably eventually, but not tonight. Um, so yeah, no, I just did a bunch of experiments and found that brown was really easy way to, um, to print pencils that where it'll disappear. Do you have a site where you sell your pages, Tyler? Dennis, I don't right now. Um, I just left my art dealer um, of many years, and I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do yet um, to sell original art. I'm hoping to not sell it myself, I think. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Socks on, yep. And this is also, um, Lupe went and got a phone for them so that they didn't have to do everything over the landline. And I thought this was fun, where they're sitting there watching cartoons and Lupe's setting up the phone and you can see she's got the box out and the little chargers on the bed and stuff. I don't know. I like the lighting in here, too. Oh, then Lupe heads out into the dark. And everything goes Frederick Remington again. Hey, Bo. Hey, Thunderstorm. Oh, Rudak, good question. What's the page count now? I think it was 2,700 and something. It's a lot. 12 years of making comics. 2,830. So many comics. Guys, I never thought I would be... Like, I never really even thought about it, but I didn't... <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting into when I started making comics. It's been a long time. And a lot of work. Well, he's on top of the bed, Michael. Not in bed yet. <laughs> so this was fun, too. This was a very fun lighting challenge. Red light, like colored light, is often really hard to get right but i thought this turned out real pretty with the red light with the green environments and i like this this was um like this really inspired well if you know the color cover for issue two it's basically this scene it's this cover But little wolf kid is like, come on, let's go, come, come follow me into the woods. Normal thing to do. Oh, thanks, Ajax. Thanks, Rudak. And then I got to draw woods again. And this, like... Well, I'll talk about it on the next page. But this was really fun. I also like, I don't know if, you, if I can get it to focus on it. There's, 
a th way I can draw feet sometimes when the characters are the right size, where it's just like their heel disappears into the ground and then there's a little shadow under the toe. And I love that. It's very, very fun to me. And I decided to make it birch trees because I never got to draw a ton of birch trees and I think that they are beautiful. With this white bark, with the little um, black dots, eyes in it. And then bum bum bum! Scary weird ass wolf mother that we met at the beginning of the episode issue. She's not looking so good. And to do this, I actually did like a, a very, very rough 3D model of this environment. I didn't end up using it as much as I kind of thought I, I might, but, um, but it was kind of useful. Like I set up, uh, like even though everything's really sort of organic and um, there's a lot of fudge room when it comes to environments like this, I wanted to have it kind of worked out in my head so I could get it um, consistent. Because especially by the, the third and fourth issue, this little scene right here gets used a lot. Oh, thanks, Thunderstorm. I'm still, like, I don't know. Light, light is still challenging. I'm still working on it. But um, it's like every project, I pick up one or two tricks and can follow it through to the next, the next project. Pippi Pop. No, the mask isn't really based on a kabuki mask. It's um, very, like, generally inspired by um, uh, masks that they used in, like, northern Canada, like Native American and indigenous First Nations people in um, northern Canada and and sort of northern west coast too. Uh, but it's not based on any specific mask because the idea is that um, that mask, this mask, comes from like before the Inuits existed, sort of a, sort of a thing. And in fact, there's a little bit in the back of here. There is a four-page story that goes a little bit into the um, the origin. Not really the origins of it, but um, gets gets behind it a little bit. <laughs> the trick, Michael, with using the green and the red and not going Christmassy is all the brown I use. That's sort of the halfway point where it's like really there's a lot more brown here than you might kind of imagine or that more than you really notice. <laughs> wow, thanks, Emma. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the as soon as you reduce an image down to dots, it loses fidelity, you know, it loses something. And the colors always shift, like it's a lot darker and cooler in the printed version than, um, than in the original art. Yeah, it's one of the challenges, like there's just not enough people doing painted comics for it to be like, um, for all the kinks to be worked out. It always takes some, some amount of like back and forth and shenanigans to try to get it right. And sometimes there just isn't time to really do everything you need to do to get it to print exactly, get the colors exactly right. Like one of these days I should ship <laughs> like a page to China where they, print these. Was this printed in China? Should say in here. Am I 
And I don't know where it would say. Oh, printed in China. So one of these days I should send them an original page and let them compare it, like get the colors right. <laughs> you stole my trees. That's okay. I stole my trees from uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Oh yeah, less more yellow. I think that's yeah, because my highlights here are pretty yellow. Yeah, text is like a huge thing, Bovi. Like that's um, compositionally, text is huge, and and also just the way it makes like the the values of a whole page work together. Putting big white circles all over your art tends to cha change the composition. Do you calibrate your monitors to make sure they're close to printer calibration? I don't know if they're close to printer calibration. Um, I do calibrate them though. I use one of those um, spider things. That's the brand name. You like set it, sort of stick it on your monitor and then run through the calibration process. Um, but um, but it's like it's one of those things. Like you never know who down the line doesn't have a calibrated monitor, you know, or a calibrated printer or something. Yeah, Pippi, that the the paper texture doesn't really come across on these guys on this paper. The um the Strathmore mixed media paper. It's really smooth enough that you can you can scan it real easy. And that's that's a huge part of why I started using this paper as opposed to using watercolor paper was just because I wouldn't have to fight with the with the texture. Keith, we need a Tyler art book. I've, I have thought about trying to put something together, but um, it's like 90%, like 99% of the art that I do is just like comic book pages. So in that respect, like there's already an art book out. Emma, that's a that's a brighter and brighter is better than darker and darker. I think, even for a horror comic, I think sometimes the my stuff prints too dark. How much of these are ink and how much is watercolor? That is a good question. So like the ink is basically anything that's like black. So like all of this is ink. And like these guys are ink and like all the outlines are ink but you can see like up in here that's like a combination of brown ink and black ink to do like this grass um, so my process is basically where I ink the whole page in brown and then I do the watercolor and then I do my black inks on top Basically the same way I do most of the stuff on, on my stream. Um, so yeah, like it's, and then I do, like lots of times I'll do ink washes um, at the very end to, to mostly with black, but sometimes with some brown and stuff or different colors. Um, so it's hard to say where like how much of it is watercolor and how much of it is ink But it's basically any color that isn't black or brown is is watercolor And who's doing the press checks? That's a very good question Michael. I don't know They keep um, a lot of the production stuff um, They sort of 
want to keep the editors like most of the publishers I work with want to keep the editors between me and like the pre-production or the production team and I can kind of understand why but um, it can also be a giant pain in the butt that way Michael do you need to flatten the paper at all after the watercolor before scanning you know, I don't really. This stuff is like, you can see that it curls, but you can, but it only curls like in one direction. Like when you put it in the scanner and you put a little weight on top of the scanner lid, it goes flat and it's, um, and it scans perfectly fine. Oh, thanks, Ajax. My art is just so saturated, it just happens. I start with muted tones, but they end up in your eyes. <laughs> Love how much more contrast your originals have. Yeah, I, I struggle with knowing how much saturation to do. I think in some of these, I probably went a little overboard. Um, But I don't know. I don't know. Like this one, this part in particular, I feel like it's a little bit too dark and saturated at the same time. But it's also kind of how it feels in a in a forest, where it's you know where the leaves are changing. It just doesn't necessarily reproduce correctly, or at least I haven't gotten it to. Oh yeah, everybody, don't forget to like the video. I think that's kind of it. That's kind of a, a quickie um, video this week. But um, yeah, you know, if you've read The Lonesome Hunters, I'd really love it if you told your friends about it. And if you want to pick up the trade, I would also be very grateful if you pre-ordered it. Um, most comic shops, when they order a book, if someone asks to pre-order a book, they'll usually buy more than one copy. Um, Bo V, do you edit the final pages on Photoshop or any other software? I do edit the pages a little bit in, um, in Photoshop. And mostly what I'm doing is just getting the white point of the paper. Um, and that's kind of it. I really try not to do too much. You know, when I was doing this, I guess, oh, that's something I didn't point out. I, um, this was before I started masking my panel borders. So you can see, like, here's a great example. You can see how messy the panel gutters are. And back when I was doing it like this, I would have to, in Photoshop, go through and make all the the pan like clean up all the gutters and it took forever um taping them off is like so much faster and i started doing that i think on issue two of this series um, oh next week's your birthday keith awesome oh thanks emma I know everyone here feels the same, but I just want to say, like, oh, dude, come on. <laughs> I really like doing these streams, Thunderstorm. Like, it, um, when I first started doing them, I was a little bit nervous that it was going to feel like a, an albatross around my neck, but um, trying to do something like this every week. But I really look forward to it. It's so nice. Like, the crew that shows up every week is just so fun and cool and everyone seems to be so like friendly to each other. It's like, it's a great way for me to end my week and I appreciate everybody being here. Dennis asks, what do you use to tape them off? I use, so I've used two different kinds of tape. 
I use, this is what I'm using right now um, that I'm really liking. It's just masking tape um, that I got from Dick Blick. And it is like the perfect size to do my gutters. Um, but before I got this stuff, I was using this, which is uh, washi tape that I ordered from uh, Jet Pens. And I basically just started using this. This stuff works great, and I love it. But this stuff um, is cheaper and works just as good. Yeah, so that's what I mask off. And you can kind of see how I mask off. Like, you can kind of see it here where there's, um, there's some overspray. Like, this is an area that I didn't mask off, but you can see I masked off right here with just regular masking tape. Oh, thanks, Keith. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this is like having a little bit of time for shop talk. Pippi is like um, so valuable. Like even if it's just to like say the shop talk stuff that you've been thinking about all week um, really solidifies a lot of like what you're doing in your head. <laughs> oh man, Ajax, I am sorry to hear that. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like the stream. All right, everybody. I'm going to call it a night. You know, one last thing maybe that's worth showing is... How I store my art. A lot of people, I see this conversation come up online kind of regularly, and um, and I think I have a good solution, at least how for how I store my stuff. I buy these boxes. You can get them from Amazon. For um, they're pretty cheap. They're like a buck fifty a piece, but you have to order like twenty five of them. And they are the perfect size for. Uh, my original comic art to live in. And one one box will hold about four, four or five comics. And then, then uh, they're safe, I guess. I don't know. They go in the closet like that. Okay, and that's it. I'm gonna finally. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. All right. Thanks again, everybody, for hanging out with me. I really, um, like I was just saying, I really enjoy uh, doing these streams, and um, I'll see y'all next week. And don't forget to tell the people you love how much you love them, and I love all you guys. All right. Bye, everybody.